What's truth? Have you made it up? What'd you get out of bed for? Where are you going? I'll tell you something about malleable truth. This is a true story. It happened about 24 hours ago. I was in my garden. I was trying to be helpful. It's never a good thing. And I was cleaning. And I got to the table, and I, the outdoor table, and I noticed one of the legs was wonky, so it was a glass table. And uh, <laughs> I turned the table on the side to look at the wonky leg. I didn't realize the glass bit is not attached to the legs. That's a stupid table, isn't it? And then this glass sheet, must be about two meters by one meter, smashed all over the patio, sprayed up and out. My life was in, in danger, but I made it through. And, and then there was literally over probably a million little one millimeter cubes of glass all over the patio. And um, I got the spade, well, I cried, and then I got it back together. Got the, couldn't call for Rita because she wasn't there, so I had to do this one alone. I had to get the spade, and it was one of those annoying ones where the spade bubbles on top of the thing you're trying to scoop up. It just scrapes along the top because I couldn't get under it. Finally found my phone, asked Rita, can I use the hoover outside? She says, you can't use the hoover because there's puddles. That's a big problem. Um, and I brushed them, and then they went into the gaps of the patio. So they're there forever. And, that, and then you start to think, because it's raining. And I was thinking, oh, I was going to have a bath today. Well, that's gone out the window, because I'm going to be here for hours. Um, and then I thought about our centenary next year, and, and then how probably in the, in the next, the one after, the bicentenary, some will be in the manse, still picking up cubes of glass, thinking, what happened here? There's that many. And then I thought about the, do the dogs. What are they going to do? This is a real pickle. And then I thought about the people that come around in the summer and the children that have barbecues from the church life, and they're all going to step on the glass. And then I thought, well, this is just chaos. And then I thought, because I managed to fill up a bucket about this high with the shards. Do you know, what are the chances now, because you start thinking when you're on your own, don't you? What are, what are the chances if I flung this bucket up and then it just came back as the sheet of glass again? <laughs> what, what are the chances? It's, it's zero, if not very close, isn't it? So I was doing the maths. Why, how many shards of glass are there? And you throw it up once. I, and I can't do maths, so I gave up with that equation. But then I thought, um, like one of the most powerful arguments for truth and that you're here and that there's order is the argument for God that he's the first cause of everything. Okay? And um, I, in one of my books, I've got, I've got a mathematician writing a chapter who says if there's no God, but yet we have the order that we have in the world and to you and everything. And then he did this maths equation of the chances that a godless explosion could cause the order that you see now. And that, those odds were infinitely smaller than me chucking the thing up. As a, and it comes back as a pain. So, secular mathematicians now are saying there's so much order, like it is impossible for it to have come from some non-mind. And um, society at the moment is doing something interesting when it comes to truth. We're trying to do truth without considering the mind behind the order. And it's getting really strange when we're guessing who we are and where we're going. And I'm following a lady at the moment in America and her story's on the news. Well, she's guessing who she is and who her family are, and she's saying it's true. But she's not 
bringing God into the equation. And what she did last week is she took her son to a vet and she said, my son's ill, can you help him? And he said, well, I'm a vet. And the mum goes, but he's a cat. And the vet goes, no, he's not a cat. He's a boy. And the mum goes, no, he's a cat. That is true. And the vet's going to be sued. It's like going on at the moment. She's like, I'm, we're going to take this to court because he says, my son's, he, my son's not a cat. And the vet's like, if I went to work on your boy, I'd probably kill him. Right? Anyway, and then I'm thinking... But if there's no God, no first cause, no order, no Jesus, no nothing, she's right. Of course he's a cat. And how dare the vet say he's not? It's just an utter free-for-all. So I'm following that one with great interest. And in all that, and whatever it looks like in your world as we guess what we're doing and where we're going and who we are and this, that, Jesus stands in this chapter and says, I'm truth. Ask me who you are, where you're going, what to do, why get out of bed. I'm the one that can handle those questions. Stop guessing. Bring me back into the equation. 